According to United Nations, Nigeria's population is at 206 million, having 33.5 unemployed, with youth unemployment rate at 38%. Apple's 2 trillion worth is higher than the GDP of 48 African countries, including Nigeria mm. and South Africa, while 82% of companies in West Africa report losses due to lack of digital talent in their company. Shocking 65% of children under the age of 12 would work at jobs that do not exist yet. This, this is, is the, the Agenda, Agenda Nigeria. Nigeria. The Agenda Nigeria is a platform for championing initiative and constructive dialogues on social, political and economic issues in Nigeria. The mission is to enhance nation building by engaging and inspiring young Nigerians. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Agenda. Agenda. Your name? Is Omotobora Samson and your name is Timitai Obalugu. And today on the agenda, we're going to be talking on upskilling and the new economy. We're going to be talking about everything technology and the future. Talking about everything tech, let's go into that session with our own moderator, Abiodun Famojuro. Hello there. My name is Abiodu Famujuro. Welcome to The Agenda. In today's thematic expression, where we are looking at the subject matter of nation builders, we have a fine gentleman with us in today's engagement who will be sharing with us from the perspective of technology. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of Star Trek. That was a series that you and I used to watch years ago. Space technology was interesting. With the advent and the scenario of the COVID-19 situation, we had to embrace technology at an accelerated rate. Augmented reality, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning. All this has come to stay, but the question is this. What is the church doing about it? What is the maximization that you and I are engaging in? We have resisted cryptocurrency, but it has refused to go. Joining me in today's wonderful segment is a gentleman. He's a regional partner of the African Technology Foundation that is based in Silicon Valley and that it, it does a lot of significant work with the United States Department. He's innovation and business development representative or manager at Ericsson. He has a lot of things that he's engaged in, including GenSpace, where he's on the board, a global board representing Africa. Make welcome to the agenda, Shaye Shoyade Johnson. Shaye, you are welcome to today's engagement. How are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm doing really, really well. Um, it's a real pleasure to be part of it. Thank you very much, Shaye. So let's get into it. Technology. It's all around us. It's driving our engagement. You are somewhere located in the heart of Africa, and I am where I am, and we're able to engage seamlessly. Let's talk fundamentally about the role that technology is playing and what it should be doing. But we need to talk about something very important. There is a communication that there is a generation of young people that will grow up studying courses for businesses that will no longer exist and they are not prepared for the technological brainwave that is coming their way. Meaning that there are some courses that right now we are studying, in 20 years time, they will no longer be relevant. What has technology done to us? And how do we remedy this situation? Talk to me, Shaya. Okay, so um, for me, right, uh, there's always change, right? That's the, that's the number one thing that is always constant, right? Um, and it's the beauty of life. Right. Yes. Um, people would say that, you know, God is never, you know, in one place. He's never stationary. He's always doing something new. Right. And apparently in heaven. Right. You always find that you look at God one more time and you always have something more to say. Wow. About. Right. Yes. So God is so much in him. Uh, he wants to express out in humanity. And so that's really where that change and that, you know, um, that expression of, of, of new things keep, keep, keep coming from. So, you know, we really shouldn't be scared that in a couple of years, right, um, there's, there's this acceleration of, of, um, of change, right, within the area of, of the nature of work, um, within the, the, the areas of society, right, the things that we grew up with, right, will be very different. And that's not a bad thing. Right. So I think that uh, we need to disabuse our minds of the fact that we say, oh, technology is disrupting the things that, you know, we've 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 come to know and love the car. Right. The car, the train. 
right? When they first came, people said that the car was from the devil. Actually, they said it was going to, you know, <laughs> rip apart society because, you know, it was something that they just couldn't understand how you can live, you know, a whole society or life without horses because up until that point horses had done everything that's where we get the the, the, the term horsepower right mm. so now you're bringing in these things that are moving on their own how 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 is that going to change work how is that going to change farming how is that going to change transportation how is that going to change you know we're at the cusp of the same thing now right um with the fourth industrial revolution where you know space technology where ai right artificial intelligence baked into everything um machine learning um so many different things right are coming at the same time usually let me let, let me let me tell you how how bad or how good this is right yes. usually there's always one technology that comes probably every few maybe 20 30 years um that will change society right yes um and it comes one at a time right so you have the internet or the car or the radio right and that technology fundamentally changed everything right across all industries right now we have not just one but probably about 10 plus technologies that are as big as the radio big as the internet that are coming at the same time right of course fundamentally um the way we do business the way we live will change going into the future it has changed Shaya. and so the way we learn has to change as well okay good Shaya. let's talk about let's talk about the learning dimension in, in regards to the church and in, in regard to the use of technology back in africa when the missionaries came they brought formal education that was their bridge to connect to the missionary world where they represented now we're talking about upscaling innovation bridging the digital divide for the church, for the body of Christ, for those who believe and sign up to the name of Jesus. Someone said to me that the book of Revelation is like a sci-fi expression. How do we, using technology, leveraging on technology, bridge the digital divide? Some persons are still struggling. I mean, the, the global pandemic made to church purely virtual. So, I mean, we could not gather in the physical space. But now, I mean, things are getting better in some parts of the world. And everybody say, let's go back to the status quo. Let's go back to how it was. That if we are not in the digital space, I need to hear from you as a nation builder. In the place of technology, how do we upscale in the place of innovation? Because, listen, the church used to be the driver of technology. Mention Michael Faraday, Isaac Newton. They had a foundation in the church. Now the invention, I mean, it's not coming from those in the church without being disrespectful. The Elon Musk, the Jeff Bezos. I don't see much of them in church. I see you though. So you need to tell me and tell everyone watching us at home, we need to upscale innovation. Look, once upon a time, having a mobile phone that used to take calls and send SMS was good enough. Now your mobile phone can do some really dangerous stuff. Record, shoot films, shoot short videos. Who would have thought that your mobile phone could have lots of music on it? Upscaling innovation. Because listen, if we do not do that, then we are endangered in the body of Christ and the young people that are not catching up will be obsolete. How can you be young and be obsolete? Shaya, talk to me. We know that we know that God will always have his way, right? Um, yeah. So you know, if, if, if we don't uh, stand up and praise him, right, the stones will do that. So Correct. God has an agenda, right? Um, hmm. Whether it's us, whether it's, you know, somewhere else in the world, someone will stand up to do what God wants. And what is on God's mind is new technology. Um, technology is God's idea. Technology is, is an expression of God. Um, you know, we sometimes say we should stay away from technology. No, um, God is the, is, is the one who, who thinks of new ideas, right? Because what is technology? Technology is a tool for solving problems for human beings. That is all technology is. The first tools, right, might have been spared, right, um, with, with, with cavemen, they say, right, um, where it helped us to protect our family, right? Yeah. But that same, that, that, that same where, where that idea comes from is, first of all, God. He says, I am the father of life, 
light is knowledge. That is what light is, mm. right? Um, so whenever you say you're, you know, so, someone someone is illuminated with an idea, right? That means that from heaven, right, or from God, right, an idea has been able to come into a human mind that can now be expressed in the physical realm, hmm. right? So yeah. all ideas, even the ones that go to people who are not Christian, come from God, right? Because God says, you know, he reigns on, on the unbeliever and the believer, right? He yeah. shines the, the sun shines on both, right? Yeah. And a lot of times he finds that his own people aren't actually ready, right? Aren't working as hard aren't um, as, as, um, as uh, you know, bullish and, and, and pushing through barriers, you know, because maybe they're waiting for him to do it, right? Yeah. But he, he's given, he asked us to have dominion on the earth, right? That is us to move. So the church is the only place that certain technologies can come through, right? And maybe that should be a solid for us. Now, what is technology? Technology is a solution plus, plus a way to commercialize that solution, right? Yeah. Guess who has done that really, really well in the Bible? Who? Right? Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> right? Yes. He was somebody who God placed that idea, right, of him, you know, um, um, being bowed down to, having some kind of influence in the world, and everybody got angry with him and threw him into a pit, right, and then went through all that journey, right, where he could have said, oh, God hates me, you know, and then finally he solved the biggest problem for the most important nation at that time, especially in God's plan, right, because the rest of the world had this famine, right, and they all now had to come to Egypt, but Egypt could have been in the same problem that everybody was going to be in, right? But then he had that solution in a dream, right? He was able to interpret that, right, for for for, for Pharaoh, right? And yeah. that in itself is what innovation is about. Innovation is being able to take that light that God gives, right, and then turn it into something that actually manifests. You know, a lot of us have ideas in the church, outside the church. Many of them don't get executed. Miles Moreau said the grave is the most rich and 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 um, prolific place in the world because a lot of these things God put in us died and went to the grave. Shaya, right. Shaya, so the number one thing for the yeah. Let, let me say something. Sorry to interrupt you. Isn't it tragic? that we still reference that quote by Miles Monroe about the grave being the, the richest place on earth. Whereas it should be, the richest place on earth should be within the body of Christ and not the grave. Yeah. Now, now let yeah. me say this, I, and I need you to say, Biodo, you're wrong, Biodo, you're right. Why has the church been, I feel personally, I could be wrong, we're talking technology and nation builders. It appears that oftentimes the church plays, plays catch up where technology and innovation is concerned. Someone is doing it out there before we latch onto it. Ironically, we have the brains within the church to activate that technology. Why are we playing catch up? How long are we going to play catch up for if we're okay, playing catch up okay. with technology um, and innovation? Um, so, so, so first of all, right, um, we, we, we're not necessarily playing catch up. All human beings are, are, whether you're a believer or non-believer, you know, if you start your car without fuel, your car is not going to run because the Holy Spirit says, I'll just start your car for you, right? You have to have fuel in it, right? So it's the same thing with innovation or working hard or going to the office and you find a non-believer working very hard and gets promoted while maybe somebody else who's a believer is maybe relying on just, you know, declaring and which are very, very key things which I'll talk about, right? We have to couple these things, right, with God. We'll be far ahead, whereby there are only things that can happen through a believer and technology, right? And that's, that's the period that we're in now. That's what God wants to open up right now. And he wants to open that up to a new generation of people who know how to receive, sit in a place of, you know what, God, how do we solve this problem, right? Showing that you really want to solve traffic or whether it's agricultural problems or whether it's governance problems or whether it's the use of AI, right? God, how can I solve this, right? How can I use, utilize whatever you have put in my hand to solve this particular thing? Being able to sit there, right? Whatever the Holy Spirit gives you, being able to now declare it with your mouth because that's how things become real in the natural, right? And then living right so that things don't now, you know, stop that um, um, project or that idea of being able to come to life, right? Yeah. But let's, let, let, let's just go back to what you were saying about the church, right? 
Google, right? Larry Page, who's the CEO of, um, who Alphabet. was one of the founders yes. of, of um, Alphabet and Google, right? He said that he had a dream, right? And that's where the idea for the world beating page rank algorithm, right? That, that made Google the leader mm. came from. It wasn't because of his PhD. It wasn't because of, you know, how hard he was working. It came in a dream. That is light. And that happens to many of us, right? In the church, outside the church. Mm. But then ideas coming from a dream into reality is the hardest thing that can happen. It's mm. really, really hard, right? Because everything in reality fights it. And we know in reality, what I mean by that is the enemy, right? Because solutions come from bringing an idea into reality and the enemy, the enemy doesn't want that. Imagine someone solving traffic problems, right? Do you know how productive Nigeria would be when people don't have to spend three hours every day, right, in traffic, right? Many things would change. Power, right? How many people who are languishing, right, because they can't work specific hours, right? So many youth who can't do anything unless they go to a business center because they can't get light where they are, hmm. right? It's really keeping us in the dark. And if someone can solve that, all of a sudden, do I solve local problems around me? Stop trying to give us a another Facebook. Stop trying to give us another, um, uh, uh, you know, mobile application, right? That's maybe been done before. Look around you. And I'm, I'm not saying, you know, only focus on social type problems like yep. traffic and agriculture and poverty, yep. right? I'm, I'm focused on consumer facing technology. I do gaming. Um, um, I, I look at how, how do we build, you know, African themed games that can scale globally using, you know, African themes, right? Um, those, those are things that, that, that I feel are still important. Because let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that right now, Shay. What you just spoke about, African thematic or African theme content. We're not telling our stories in the place of technology. Exactly. Someone else is, look, look, Wakanda forever. I mean, it was all an African expression, but the, the, a, a great population of those actors are not African. Yes, they have African descent. The, I mean, the, there's a recent album, I'm, I'm not gonna mention the name, by a popular female musician you know, in America. It seems that America or the world loves Africa when there is something to get from us. Because we're not telling enough of our stories. I'll give you a very classic example. Someone said to us that Mongo Park discovered River Niger. You and I know that River Niger existed before Mongo Park was born. How can he discover River Niger? Mm. Shouldn't, we be, shouldn't we be coming up with technology, innovative expressions to tell the stories about River Niger, to tell the stories and say, you know what, children, look, are we benchmarking global standards? Because, I mean, children of certain age are coding. They're coding outside Africa. Now we're embracing coding. Now coding is the next big thing. But that's why I said, are we playing catch up? Because technology is, look, the technology that was good on Monday, by Friday, it's obsolete. Yeah. It's obsolete. So for the church, for the African nation, for Nigeria as a nation builder, if we're coming up, we generate so much waste in the state called Lagos. It's, it's, I mean, the refuse is significant. Why are we not doing something about recycling to a level that other people can come and we can generate massive energy? So I need you to tell us, in your innovative mindset and upscaling, the solutions that we need to be looking at and the technology that helps us to tell our own story. In the original dimensions of it, Queen Amina, there are many legends, Jaja of Okobo. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I jump yes, in I, here, right? Go ahead, please. It, 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 fundamentally, um, Abiola, it's about mindset. Mindset. You know, I, 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 really, I, I really apologize for always going back to this because I'm somebody who is, is called towards innovation, right? Yes. And innovation starts with the mind. We live in, a, in, 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 you know, where, where, I mean, Joyce Myers talks about the, the battlefield of the mind, right? Why do yeah. we have a battlefield of the mind? Because that's where the key is to winning reality, hmm. right? Tesla, right? What is Tesla doing? What is Elon Musk doing, right? He is solving the problem of moving a car from A to B using electricity rather than fossil fuels, right? Which yes. are damaging the planet. And all of a sudden, now he became almost uh, the fifth richest person in the world 
Meanwhile, 10 years ago, people were laughing at him. Right, people were saying this was never, ago, Elon, never. Elon Musk was a joke. He was a joke ten years ago. Yes, yes, exactly. In many different ways. Now he's now now people are celebrating him. But do you know how hard it is to be able to how what kind of mental strength you need to to have to have hundred year old industries like the car industry or like the the oil and gas industry right against you and still push your idea forward? The amount of hard work it takes to do that that is where we're lacking. Right, because we we, we, we 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 say, Oh God, please give me this thing. God gives it in the form of light. Our job is to, like Adam, bring it into reality through hard work. Right? Mm. Through there's a part to play on the human side. And unfortunately on the church and and maybe it's it, it's really the, the, the wrong expectations that we put in our youth. Right. Where we say just spend five hours in, in prayer or, you know, push through to, you know, those things are needed. But sometimes God is looking for obedience in certain areas. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you actually someone who is diligent? Are you someone who people can rely on? Right. These are the things that really get things through. That's the only reason why someone like Elon Musk, who is not a believer, is able to push through an idea that God, only God has given him. Right, all the way through into reality, and we're all looking at him now. God says there are at least ten Elon Musk in Nigeria. There are at least there are way more in Africa, right? And this is our time because he got that idea from God. Meanwhile, his own church, he wants to give each each of us two or three of those kind of ideas, hmm. right? Yeah. Or are we ready? Are we are we positioned? Okay. So it starts with our the mind. mindset. And, and, and sorry, sorry, let, yes. me, let me just say, say it. Go ahead. a lot of times in Africa, what happens is we say, oh, 3D printing or artificial intelligence or space technology, that's too far away, please. You know, imagine if you were to look at space and, you know, um, the, the rocket falls out of the sky because there's no electricity or, you know, <laughs> that is mindset that kills things at the first go. It tried this, this, hmm. this, this idea. Try, imagine like a, an idea as a spirit. It's trying, it finds expression. But in Africa, we say, no, 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 this is too far for us. Solve this one first, and then we can move there. But then we don't see that the, the, we've been trying to solve these things for the last 50 odd years in the same sort of way. Why not try one of these technologies that seems so far away? You might actually find that the answer is in those things that, mm. that, that, that we're, we're thinking don't apply to us because mm. we're not as advanced. These mm. things are tools. A fork is a tool. A spoon is a tool. It can be used in many different ways. A pen can be used to write or draw. AI, space technology, or robotics, they are tools. Apply them to your local problem, right? Yes. In a way that will differentiate you globally, right? A Spanish kid is going to use AI to solve problems that are close to him. He's not going to solve problems like um, traffic. Because he doesn't face that every day. True. But imagine a Nigerian who learns how to maybe code in, in machine learning and stuff, applies it towards the patterns of, of, of how traffic, traffic builds up, right? Looking at maybe um, 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 through uh, video cameras, video feeds, right? To catalog, where, where does traffic form, you know, in a specific point? You might find that it's a little puddle on one road that, that always forms that. Right. Yeah. All of a sudden, there's actionable insights from the AI that maybe you can give the government to solve that, and they can pay for those kind of things. Mm. What happens with innovation is that when it starts working and giving value in your local um, vicinity, it scales. Your company starts making money because you're providing value. You scale across the country, build up, and then you find that there's expression in other countries because mm. they have those problems, but they're not as big to them. But they still have the problem, right? So okay. if you saw traffic in Nigeria, you're going to find LA in the US saying, oh my God, maybe we should use that technology too because it takes us three hours to move between certain certain areas. That's right. But maybe it's not the first thing they would want to solve. So mindset and innovation go hand in hand. In hand. That's one of the key things that we need to teach okay. and really help people to, to, to um, the youth to really see. Thank you so much, Shoyede Johnson. You have spoken in a very profound manner. We have some few, few minutes to round off in this wonderful, engaging session. The mindset.
Uh, it's called the law of the lead, according to one of the legendary leadership experts. Um, we cannot rise beyond the level of the leadership that we've placed around us and up above us. So what you're saying in essence is if we're going to upskill, if we're going to ex 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 embrace space technology. I mean, not, right now there's a battle about Mars. Everybody wants to talk about going to Mars. The moon is no longer mm -hmm. the subject matter of consideration. And businesses and organizations are using big data for predictive technology. They're configuring algorithms to tell you how you will think and what you will think. So in, in essence, we're being programmed without knowing that we're being programmed. And so technology has come to stay. And yeah. at the level at which it's moving, we need to be resourceful and ahead of our game. Shoyade Johnson, time has never been the friend in the place of an intellectually stimulating conversation. It would be desirous for us to take this further, but allow me to say this before you have a final word, before we round off. Wherever you are joining us, being part of this powerful engagement, understand this. Technology is here to stay, it's not going anywhere. If you reject it, you are obsolete. You are irrelevant. You become a dinosaur. If you embrace it, and you see, technology is neither evil. In the hands of the right person, it will deliver the results you desire. It doesn't take sides. So when you are of the perception that a technology element has come to bring us down, you are wrong. And I need each and every one of us to get this into our consciousness. We need to move faster than we've ever moved before. Africa must move. Nigeria must move from developing, developing, developing. We have the human resource to leverage and technology. The church should be the directing focus. Shay, a final word yeah. from you. So my, my final word is that God is actually um, hoping on us, right? He, he gives us a choice, right? Um, and he's hoping because he's put the solutions on in us. Technology, innovation are not a nice to have, they're must have. There are certain technologies that will only come on the earth through his own people, right? Um, I see things like hard light. Hard light is, you know, actually, you know, like how we can stand on concrete, being able to stand on light. Right, um, space technology. God keeps putting on my mind that space is very important to Him. The, the, the realm around the Earth, right, which every country right now is pushing to be part of. There's this new space race and new space economy where some countries are going to make trillions from Africa. God is saying there's a solution that I put in you that needs to be part of that. The world would lose if your voice is not part of that space race. So don't think it's a nice thing, you know, um, or or um, uh, if I'm not there, no one's losing out because I, after all, I'm Africa. I'm not as I'm not expected to be there. No, they, they don't know they're losing out. It's just like somebody who is a big brother, right? Who just doesn't step up to the plate. We all lose out, right? Africa has a solution for the rest of the world, and it's coming through technology. Let's be part of that. God has put it in us, but he needs us to pray, remain in his presence, and then download, speak whatever he gives you. The, 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 the verses, the things that God reveals through in the, in the Bible, say them out with your mouth, and then start working, and he will take you there. Um, technology is only a solution. It's, it's, not a, it's not something that's far out there. So don't think of it as, yeah, as, as something that Africa is not supposed to be part of. Technology is needed on the earth. Don't so be selfish by, by holding back and trying to be falsely modest. We have to be part of the conversation. Thank and that will lead us out of poverty and, and other things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Shere Shere Johnson. I remain a Biodun Famujuro. Thank you. This is The Agenda. Till I come your way next time. Please connect with us on our various social media handles and please join the conversation. Get involved and know you can make a difference. Bye for now.